The following video demonstrates an easy signal tracing method for the Fender Princeton model AA1164 utilizing a marked up layout diagram with test points. Stage gain is not being measured. We are verifying that the audio is passing through the amp. The test point method will help you to narrow down where the signal is being lost. Note, we are just checking the main signal path, not the reverb or tremolo interface. Okay, let's check out the equipment required. The equipment required for the test is audio generator, which in this case I'm using a Heathkit IG5282. And below that, I have a signal tracer, and it's also a Heathkit, the model IT5283. For the speaker output, we're going to actually dump that signal into an audio dummy load. And that way we can allow for testing without having to hear the speaker generating the tone that you're trying to hear on the signal tracer. Alright, let me show you the setup. Alright, let's start with the audio generator. I have it set for sine wave output 700 Hertz at 200 millivolts. The reason I'm using an audio generator is we need a constant signal source for the signal tracing of the amplifier. So the audio generator is hooked to the instrument channel 1. Our controls, we're going to preset the volume at minimum. Treble and bass will both be at 5. Reverb speed and intensity are all set at position 1 because we are not testing those functions. The volume control will be adjusted as we are measuring test points for the proper amplitude. Signal Tracer, you're going to simply turn it on, adjust your level control for a comfortable listening level while you're measuring the test points in the amplifier. Alright, let's measure the test points as shown on the marked up Fender Princeton layout diagram. Now these test points are the signal, so this is your audio passing through the eyelet board. Do not attempt to measure off of the plate resistors or any other points that are not shown on the diagram. There's high voltages that could damage your signal tracer. Now here is the modified layout diagram for a Fender Princeton Reverb for the purpose of signal tracing. It's in a logical format. We're going to come in at TP1. We'll pass through all these test points and eventually end up at TP8 which is the speaker output. If this diagram is too hard to see during the video, email me and I will send you a copy. Right, here we go, time to signal trace the Princeton AA1164 amplifier. As I stated, my input source is the audio generator, which goes to test point one. This is pin two of the 12AX7 tube. That goes up through these tone capacitors and ends up on the high side of the volume control. The center of the volume control comes down to test point 2, which is pin 7 of the 12AX7 tube. Now you see the volume's low, but you can adjust that with the volume control. Now we're going to go to test point 3, which is the output of that second triode of the 12AX7. Goes through this coupling capacitor and ends up at that point. And there's a lot of amplification there because now we're using both stage of the 12AX7 II. Underneath the board there is a jumper wire that sends that signal up here to the reverb input filter assembly. And that same signal passes through that assembly to this point which is test point 4 and that goes down to a tube and they call that the recovery preamp tube so it recovers both tone loss and the loss of the reverb filter assembly. So as I stated TP4 goes to pin 7 of V3 the recovery tube which is reamplifying the preamp signal. From there we're going to go to what I'm going to call test point 5A. It goes through this coupling cap and that's the signal. If you follow this white wire it zings over here and that actually goes to pin 7 of the inverter tube which is the input so that same signal is present there. 
So now we have a signal to the inverter tube and at this point it's going to split that signal and feed the grids of the two 6V6 tubes. Okay, so one side comes up here to this point. I'm going to call that TP6A. The other side is going to come up to what we're going to call TP7A. So 6A is there. Now if you follow this wire, it goes to pin 5 of this 6V6 tube. So that grid signal is present. Now we have 7A. And if you follow the red wire, it goes to pin 5 of the other 6V6 tube. So at this point, we have signals present at the grids of the 6V6 tubes. And if everything else is doing its job, I'll put transformer, high voltage, etc. When we go to our final test point, which is 8, that is the speaker output. So if I were to monitor that signal, adjust my volume, you can see that the amplifier is doing its job. So by tracing this amplifier using the test point method, Let's say that you had a signal present on test point 4, but yet you had nothing at test point 6 and 7. That would indicate for some reason the signal is not getting to the inverter tube. So this will help you narrow down the focus of the areas that you need to look while troubleshooting these amplifiers.